Hi there, welcome to another Tips and Tricks Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining me. Now today, we're gonna do our final installment of our Auto Lisp tips, okay? Because I received so many emails. Maybe we'll come back later and we'll revisit it, but today's gonna be the last one for a while, okay? Now, for those of you who are just joining us now and you don't know anything about Auto Lisp, you're gonna back, need to back up a little bit and check out some of the previous tips. There's two of them. But for the rest of you, let's go down the road of GUDEM, all right? Let's learn a little bit more about Autolisp. We've already learned a lot, right? We've learned how to make our own functions, our own commands that we can run at the command line in AutoCAD. We've learned how to tell Autolisp that we want to pause for user input. We learned how to do an enter. And we also learned how to get rid of the dreaded nils, right? So we're going to just go a little bit further today. And we're going to make an Autolisp routine that's a little more complicated that is going to insert a block for us. I bet you have plenty of blocks that you insert all the time over and over again and you're tired of doing so many picks and clicks we're gonna shorten that up all right so I'm gonna go into the insert command and you'll see that this is the, the block that we're gonna insert it's a car car underscore PV that's the name all right now one of the issues with Autolisp let's go into the insert command once again is it goes into a dialog box and guess what Autolisp doesn't know what to do with the dialog box I can't tell Autolisp uh, hit that next box down or or move over to the right and key in information in the box on the third on the left or anything like that I can't do that Autolisp only talks to the command line so right off I'm kind of running into a problem because it can't talk to dialog boxes but no fear we're gonna work this out because just about every single command and AutoCAD can be run from the command line, no problem. How do we tell AutoCAD not to do a dialog box? How do we tell it to do just the command line interface? We put a dash in front of it. So dash insert, we're gonna get something completely different, all right? Dash insert, all right, now there's the name of the block, but we would say car underscore PV, that's what we'd have to type in. And the next question after the block name is the insertion point, right? Where do you want it to go? So I'm probably gonna pause for user input on that one because I don't know where I want my car to go and I want my list routine to be very, very flexible. So we're just kind of going through the prompts because in a minute we're gonna go into the Lisp editor and we're gonna write the command. We're gonna write our own routine and I need to know step by step what's first. So first we go into the insert command. Then we type in the name of the block we wanna insert, right? And then we pick where we want it to go. And now it's asking me for the X scale factor. Oh, I want the X scale factor to be one, right? And I want the Y scale factor to be one. And then for rotation angle, I can leave it at zero or I could let my user rotate it around, right? It's up to you. You could do a pause maybe for that. Or once again, we can let we can key in the information ourselves. I'm just gonna say zero. Okay, can you remember all those options? Remember all those prompts? Okay, it's always good to go through it first before you do the programming so you know what comes first, what comes second, third, etc. Okay, now we're gonna go into the Lisp Editor. Let's go over to the Manage tab. And we're gonna say Visual Lisp Editor. And conveniently, of course, it has the one that I worked on before. You can see the commands we've written before. ZP for zoom previous, EL for erase last, and 2P for a two-point circle. All right, now we're ready to do another one. Open paren, define, C colon, well, let's just call it car. Keep it nice and short and sweet because that's what you're going to be keying in the command line, huh? And remember this, open and close paren, which if I come back and do more installments, I'll tell you why we do that. But right for right now, remember, because I said so, open and close paren. All right, the next line, open paren, command. We want to execute an AutoCAD command, right? And what's the name of the command? Insert. Oh, you're probably thinking, well, don't you need to put a dash in front of that? No, because Autolisp won't execute the dialog box because it knows it can't talk to a dialog box. So I don't have to put a dash here. Only when I'm trying to run it, only when I'm trying to, to see how this would look inside of AutoCAD do I need to put a dash in front of it. So in fact, if you want AutoCAD to do a dialog box, oh, you have to do extra work to get that to happen because <laughs> Autolisp does not like to talk to dialog boxes. All right, so insert. Okay, what do you want to insert? Car underscore PV, right? That's the name of the block. So whatever block it is that you want to create your routine for, that's what you type in here. And since that's something that I type in at the command line in AutoCAD, that has double quotes around it, just like insert has double quotes around it. So let's see, what's the next question? Insertion point, oh, I don't know. I wanna leave that open. I wanna pause for user input, user input, right? So pause for user input. I don't put double quotes around that because Autolisp gets that and knows what that is. In fact, if I'm at the command line in AutoCAD and I type in pause, AutoCAD would go, what, what are you talking about? So I don't need double quotes for this. Next question, X scale factor. All right, so Autolisp understands numbers. We'll talk about this a little bit more, but Autolisp understands numbers. So I can just put a one for the X scale factor, one, 
for the y scale factor, don't use the defaults because those might have changed. Maybe the default's 0.25 or something. Then you, you wouldn't get the right size. So I'm going to say the x scale factor of 1, y scale factor of 1. And then what's the last question? Rotation angle. So I could pause for user input, or I could type in a 0. And we're going to talk about this just a little bit more when we go into this again, all right? But because I know some of you lispers are cringing that I don't explain it any more than that. <laughs> And then I go, I like to, oh, we have to do, what do we have to do? Our prints, right? We got to get rid of the nils, prints. Someday my prints will come, right? And then last but not least, we want to do the closed print. So everything's all lined up. Everything's pretty. This goes with that one. That goes with that, so on and so forth. We don't have any extra prints. We don't want any extra prints. All right, looks pretty good. Got rid of the nils, closed it up. Looks pretty. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a save. Save it. All right, now we have to load it, right? So load application. And we called this catalyst, for those of you who are just joining in, cheating and not watching the first two videos. <laughs> so I'm going to load it. And at this point in time, remember, Autolist will let us know if so far, so good. And right now it said successfully loaded. So, so far, so good. I'm going to close that up. All right, now we're ready. Car. What happens? It just wants to know where I want the car to go. Maybe I'll just put it in here somewhere. Oh, I'll just put it in the middle. Let's put it right in the middle. And then there were no more questions. One click. Car command, one click. I'm done. Love that. All right, let's dig just a tiny bit deeper, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back. I'm going to grab our Lisp editor, which is right there. And let's say I want to modify it so that the x scale factor is 0.5 and the y scale factor is 0.5. Well, I want you to know that Autolisp is going to have a heart attack at that. And you're like, well, why? You told me it knows what numbers are. It knows, in this case, these are real numbers. Once you put a, a, a decimal point in there, it becomes a real number. And to Autolisp and most programming languages, you have to always start with a leading zero if you have a value less than one. So if the number was two, I could just type in a two. But if it's a value less than one, you have to put a zero in front of it. Oh, don't forget that. So 0.25 would be 0 0.25. You can remember that though, right? That's pretty easy because Autolist recognizes it as a real number and it has to have a leading zero. Just go with it. And then last but not least, this rotation angle of zero. You know, you and I think probably zero degrees. Autolist talks in radians. Oh my gosh, I don't even, I don't even know what radians are anymore. And I was a math major. I don't remember radians, <laughs> barely, barely. So if I typed in 45 for a 45 degree angle, Autolisp would think that was 45 radians. Oh my gosh, that's a problem. That's not right. So what we're going to do is we're going to hand it back over to AutoCAD. Anything with double quotes around it is something that AutoCAD understands. And AutoCAD understands 45 degrees, right? AutoCAD knows what that is. So if, when you're dealing with angles, just remember Autolisp thinks radians, crazy Autolisp. So you're going to want to put double quotes around it. Or you could figure out what the radian value is for 45 degrees. But who wants to do that? I don't want to do that. So another thing I could have done, if I insisted on not putting the leading zero, I could have said double quote 0.5 because AutoCAD knows what 0.5 is. Anything around double quotes means that if you type in the command line in AutoCAD, it would understand. So I could also do this, 0.5. I could do both. We'll do but we'll do a little bit of both. AutoCAD, Autolisp doesn't care. I got everything there. So X scale factor 0 0.5, it's in double quotes, so I don't need a leading zero. Y scale factor 0 0.5, not in double quotes, so I do need a leading zero and 45 degrees in double quotes, so it doesn't think radians. All right, and is that complicated? I hope it's not. I hope it's not. Like I, like you know, I can really hear what you say. <laughs> All right, we save it again. Let's save it. And then we're going to come back here and run it, right? Let's run. Let's load that application. Come all the way down here. Let's try it again. Did anybody yell at me? Oh, didn't yell at me. Successfully loaded. So far, so good. Yes. Close that up. And let's try this again. It's going to be just a little bit different. The car is going to be smaller. And it's going to be at a 45 degree angle, right? Car. I just have to pick where I want it to go. And it's definitely smaller. And it's definitely at a 45 degree angle. Now, if at the end, like I said, you wanted to pick the rotation angle, which in this case, you probably would, then you would have done that pause, right? We would have done pause for user input. I know that's pretty complicated, but try it. Make, make your own list routines and remember things like values less than one have to have a leading zero and that Autolisp always likes to talk in radians, crazy Autolisp. All right, but hey, awesome. Maybe you'd make one called title for your title block. And maybe you'd even have it fill in the, the attribute values for your name at least, right? Oh, you can make Autolisp do amazing things for you, save you lots of time. 
and that's what it's all about. And that's why I'm here to help save you some time. So thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a great rest of the week, and see you back here in two more weeks.